Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In this tutorial, we introduce the concept of phase margin. Phase margin is an important measure of the system's stability. We explain the basic idea behind the phase margin and we explain how to identify the phase margin from Nyquist and Bode plots. But before I start, I would like to mention the following. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains graphs, explanations, and even MATLAB codes. A link to this post is given in the description below. Then, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this post and this video tutorial. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. Consider an open loop transfer function g of s. Figure 1, that is this figure, shows the Nyquist plot of g of j omega where j is square root of minus 1 and omega is the frequency. This point over here is a critical stability point. For example, this Nyquist plot can correspond to the Nyquist plot of this function. g of s is equal to 1 over s, s plus 2. If you substitute s by j omega, you will obtain g of j omega. Then, if you plot a Nyquist plot of this function, you will obtain something that looks like this. This red line represents the Nyquist plot of the open loop transfer function. Next, let us define the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency, omega c, is the frequency at which the Nyquist plot intersects the circle with radius 1. That is, the crossover frequency is the frequency omega c at which the gain of our open loop transfer function in the Nyquist plot is equal to 1. Let us find the point at which the Nyquist plot intersects the circle with radius 1. Here is the point. The frequency at which magnitude of g of j omega is equal to 1 is our crossover frequency, and this crossover frequency is denoted by omega c. Now we are ready to define the phase margin. The phase margin is the angle measured in degrees by which the phase of g of j omega exceeds minus 180 degrees at the crossover frequency. Here's the crossover frequency and this is the phase of g of j omega at the crossover frequency. Consequently, this angle over here measured from here is our phase margin. So again, let us repeat the procedure for constructing the phase margin. I will erase this part over here. First of all, you need to identify the crossover frequency. Here is the crossover frequency. Then, you need to identify the phase at the crossover frequency, and the phase is represented by this angle over here. This is the phase. And notice here that the phase is negative. Then, the phase margin is basically the angle from this horizontal line to this line over here. And this is our phase margin. From a mathematical point of view, phase margin is given by this formula over here phase margin is equal to 180 plus the phase of 
g of j omega c, where omega c is the crossover frequency. Next, let us give an intuitive understanding of the phase margin crossover frequency and let us give a few recommendations for designing systems with specific phase margin. Roughly speaking, smaller the phase margin is, more unstable the closed-loop system is. This is because the phase margin is the angle distance from the critical stability point, minus one zero. Control engineers usually specify the desired closed-loop system stability and performance in the form of the phase margin specification. And this is very important to remember. Usually, the lowest acceptable value of the phase margin is 30 degrees. Also, as I will show in the follow-up tutorial, the phase margin is directly related to the damping ratio of the closed-loop system. Higher the phase margin, higher the damping ratio of the closed-loop system, and consequently, the closed-loop system is more stable. Then, in some sense, the phase margin can be seen as a measure of the robustness of the system. Namely, often in practice, we don't know accurately coefficients of the transfer function. That is, we don't know accurately the system model. By designing systems with sufficiently large phase margins for assumed transfer function parameters, we would ensure that the system remains stable if the actual parameters are different from the assumed parameters that are used to model the system. On the other hand, the crossover frequency is the measure of the speed of response of the system. Let us now illustrate graphically how the phase margin influences the transient response and the stability of the system. We consider three open loop systems given by the equation number two. In the first case, the phase margin is very low, it's 5.72 degrees. In the second case, it's 18 degrees. And in the third case, it is 51.8 degrees. In the sequel, I will plot the Nyquist plot and the closed-loop step response of these systems in order to illustrate how the phase margin influences the transient response and, in some way, the stability of the system. I determine the Nyquist plot and the closed-loop step response of these systems by using these MATLAB code lines. First of all, I define my transfer function. I simply use the TF function in MATLAB. Then, for such a system, I call Nyquist function to plot the Nyquist plot. Then, I define my feedback system simply as an open loop transfer function W1, and in a feedback, I have one. And this function will automatically determine and will give you a closed loop system with a negative feedback. Then I call the MATLAB function step to plot the step response. And let us see the results. Here's the Nyquist diagram of the first system. We can observe that the phase margin is 5.72. And here's the phase margin. Then here is the step response of such a system. We can observe that the step response is quite oscillatory. And these oscillations during the transient response can be devastating. And this is not acceptable. This is because the phase margin is approximately 6 degrees. And if you remember what I said at the beginning of the video, acceptable value of the phase margin is above 30 degrees. Consequently, we don't like this system. We don't want our closed-loop system to behave like this. Then, let's see what happens in the second case. Here's the second system, and we can observe that the phase margin is larger. That is, the phase margin is equal to 18 degrees. Hmm, this is a little bit better. And let's see the corresponding step response. Here is the step response. Again, situation is not as good as it should be. We can see very large oscillation during the transient response and 
this closed loop system again is not good. Again, here the phase margin is 18 degrees and this is smaller than 30 degrees, smaller than the critical value. And let's see the Nyquist plot for the third system. Here's the third system. We can observe that the phase margin is relatively high. It's 51 degrees. And here is the closed loop step response. And we can see that the closed loop step response is nice. We can observe that the first overshoot is not significant. And this is a, an example of a relatively well-designed closed loop system. Here the phase margin is 52 degrees, approximately 52 degrees, and this is larger than the critical value of 30 degrees. These three examples explain the significance of the phase margin. We can observe that relatively low value of the phase margin gives a very oscillatory response that's very close to unstable system. Most likely, in practice, this phase margin will imply that the system is unstable because remember that you don't know the parameters of the transfer function accurately. Small deviations of the real transfer function parameters might produce unstable system. Because you're here, you're very close to the critical stability point. As we increase the phase margin, we can observe that the response, that is, that the closed loop response becomes better and better. For example, for 18 degrees phase margin, you're seeing something like this. And for the phase margin of 52 degrees, approximately 52 degrees, we see this nice smooth step response. So far, we learned how to identify the phase margin from the Nyquist plots. Let us now learn how to identify the phase margin from the Bode plots. So consider this example. This is a second order open loop system. And let us plot its Bode plot. The Bode plot is given over here. Here's the magnitude plot, and here's the phase plot. And now the question is, what is the phase margin of this plot? How to identify the phase margin? The first step is to draw a horizontal line from the zero decibel line and to identify an intersection of this horizontal line with the magnitude plot. So let's do that. We start at zero decibels, and we draw a horizontal line. And we identify a point where this horizontal line from zero decibels crosses the magnitude plot. This is because the phase margin is defined for the point at which the gain of an open loop system is equal to 1. Since the Bode magnitude plot is defined by 20 logarithms, with the base 10 of our g of j omega, we can see that on the Bode plot, the point where the gain is equal to 1 corresponds to the point for which the magnitude plot crosses the 0 dB point. Once we identify this point, we draw a vertical line until minus 180 degrees. This point over here, at which this vertical line crosses the phase plot of our system, that is of our open loop system, is an important point. The phase margin is then this angle over here. So it's the distance from 100 80, that is from minus 180 to this point over here. And this distance is our phase margin. The whole procedure for identifying the phase margin from the Bode plot 
is summarized over here. So let's repeat this procedure once more. The first step is to draw a horizontal line from zero decibels to, to find the intersection with the magnitude plot. So this is our horizontal line and this is the intersection. Then we draw a vertical line and search for intersection with the phase plot. Here is the intersection. Then the phase margin is simply the distance from minus 180 degrees to this point over here. And that's it. That would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the subscribe and like buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.